Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it FOMO returns because the fear of missing out sure seems like it got back to a peak this last week with the uh, put to call ratios and the sentiment seeming to get fairly bullish. As a matter of fact, we're going to take a look at the data here. We're going to look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, take a look at the VIX, take a look at the high yield bond fund, check in on the semiconductor, the Philly Semiconductor Index, the SOX. And then also look at Bitcoin. Okay, so I've got the Dow Industrials daily chart on the screen here. So what have I got on the data? So right now, I think we've had this big intermediate wave one, and I'm calling it intermediate wave one for now. It could end up actually changing it to primary wave one, but it doesn't really matter for our purposes right now. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. And then we got wave two. So we'll get into retracements and things like that in a minute. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is the put to call ratio. Now you've seen me uh, show the put to call ratios in a spreadsheet before. So what happened here this last Wednesday with this peak? We got to a put to call reading. And I say equity put to calls because it's on the stocks only. And this is out of the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, the CBOE. 0.54. That was the lowest one day reading since February 20th. Here's February 20th. And that low reading was 0.51. Now that's not the lowest reading ever. I mean, I'm just saying that this was the lowest reading since that reading with all of this activity. So slowly, slowly, the bullishness has crept back in. So I also take a look at 10 day moving averages. Well, the 10 day put to call ratio got to 0 .0, 0 0.60. And that was the lowest reading since right here on February 26. So slowly that sentiment, that bullish sentiment has built back in with this rally. And it seems to have peaked right in here. We're coinciding with this peak right here. Now we also had some readings that were extremely bearish, which is exactly what you would expect with this kind of move. And it was the highest 10 day put to call readings uh, that we'd seen. Uh, actually, it was the highest ever on March 19th. It was the highest I'd end up with all the data I've got all the way back to 2006. I have not seen a 0 0.99 10 day reading. Okay, we've gotten a couple 0.98s, which we got the day before on the 18th and the day after on the 20th. And those tied with the 0.98s, two of them that we got in 2008, in March of 2008 and November 2008. So extreme readings uh, on the bearish side. We're getting the bullish sentiment creeping back in. Let's take a look at uh, another view in here. Okay, so here's the retracement. At this peak, we've retraced 57.7%. We're right in that zone. And by the way, since I'm talking about retracements, I took a look at six major peaks in the Dow Industrials, okay? And I wanted to see what did the first the first major bounce, that second wave, uh, after a big move down off the peak, what did that first major bounce do? So I took a look at six of them. And if you head on over to my website at johenches.net, you can check out the post, how much of a second wave where I talk about that and give the detail and I show the screenshots of the various, um, the various moments and the various charts uh, at that time. And if you'd like to have more of this kind of information on a regular basis, check out the membership while you're there. Okay, so that's the picture. Right now we've got a trend line break that happened with the big move down on Friday. We were down 622 points. So for two days in a row. Uh, the other thing I noticed in here, what I've put on the chart is the move down was 27 days. So far, the move back up, which looks like it peaked here, has been 26 days, okay? And the reason why we're thinking it's peaked is for several reasons. The percentage retracement, the breaking of the trend line, looking at hourly and underneath intraday data, the wave structure in here looks complete, okay? Now we're wanting to see if this is truly the start of intermediate wave three. This is where it's going, okay? And it's going to need to the the price action and the volume and the price action is going to get more negative than what we saw in wave one. That is what happens in a wave three. 
Okay, let's take a look at the VIX. Okay, the VIX popped up 3.04 on Friday, closed at 37.19. It's interesting, on Thursday, I was telling the members in the in the nightly video, I, you know, we got that first move down off the peak on the 29th, and I was really disappointed in the way the VIX acted. You know, I really, you know, we, we didn't close above, say, a two-day high or anything. We didn't get back above the 10-day moving average. But then on Friday, not only did we close above a two-day high, we closed above the range of the last four days and did close slightly above that 10-day moving average. So that is a much better start. It's the potential. So right now, different things are lining up, and this is acting like it may be the start of something. Although, let me just do something real quick. When this breaks this trend line, it will probably be an even stronger indication that we're breaking out. And we're, you know, we're right there on the trend line coming down. Okay, that's the VIX, the High Yield Bond Fund, HYG. So this was down $1.75 on Friday. So the interesting thing about this is this has been really going counter trend to what the market was doing, right? You know, when you look at the Dow Industrials, the Dow's been trending up, and the, all the major indices have been trending up. But the high yield bond fund, and where was this? This was uh, April 9th. This big move was when the Fed announced that they were going to be buying uh, junk bond or junk debt kind of thing, and everybody thought, oh, well, they're buying HYG. I don't think they are, but that popped and this has been coming back down and um this is the counter trend move since where is april 9th is right here so you can just see okay all right so that's the high yield bond fund we'll see if this continues to uh play out that way um you know it did this beautiful abc pullback in the channel we've broken down out of that and now i would expect this to continue to come down and break break these, this low and, and continue to move to the downside with the market. Okay, that's the high yield bond fund. Let's take a quick look at the semiconductor index, uh, the SOX, and I'm going to go back over here. Here's the start. It was down 11.46 on Friday. Now we've had a couple of these moves before. You need some continuation to the downside to, uh, you know, otherwise it's just a little blip. We got a pretty good little reversal candle for the week. For the week, the uh, SOX was down, I'm looking up top, down 7.15, but it does have the potential to be a big reversal candle. And again, we need follow through to the downside. Um, I'm looking at my notes. I want to go to this scenario right here. Okay, so here's the data on this. Very similar. It's interesting that on Wednesday, again, there's Wednesday, here's that high. It came right up and just within a fraction of the high that occurred on that uh, wave two pullback, minor wave two of intermediate wave one. Okay, and that was, what is that reading? I've got it set in here, 244.21, and the high on Wednesday was 244.63. And then we've reversed back down and pulled down. And you can see the rally in here has been a little bit longer, 29 days versus the 22 day decline. Uh, retracing a deep 75.6%. Now, and I'll put that over here because that's a little more what we're talking about. Um, when you look back, you see, you'll see some numbers when you look at that blog post, you're going to see some numbers that are up like this, uh, even on the Dow back into some historical peaks. And, you know, this is what has occurred with the, um, the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ 100, NASDAQ Composite have had a very deep retracement in terms of what they've been doing. Okay, the last thing I want to look at today is Bitcoin. Okay, I want to start off by looking at the Bitcoin uh, ETF, GBTC. And here's what uh, I hadn't, I got a request from one of my members to take a look at this during the week, right? Yeah, I think it was during the week, yeah, this last week. And I hadn't really looked at it since back here in February, so a little over a year ago. And this was the data, this is what I had, and I thought we had an inner, a cycle wave two bottom occurring. And right now, the way the price action has, has happened since then, it's just reinforced that that seems to be what's going on. This looks like an impulsive wave one up, a wave two back, and it looks to me like we're in a 
primary wave three to the upside. So let me zoom in and let me give just a little more detail in here. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Nice five wave move off of this big retracement. And then here we've had this zigzag pullback for uh, primary wave two. And we now seem to be off and running. And if I drill down and take a look at the daily chart, here's what we're looking at in here. Okay. And it looks like we're underway in wave three. Now, what have I done with this trend line? I put a trend line across the high here because this pretty much contains all the corrective action. And this will be confirmed when we break out of this. I mean, it'll just reconfirm what I think is going on in here. And it breaks this trend line and breaks out. Uh, and then gets above that primary wave one high over here. Okay, so that's the picture there. Now I'm getting a similar type picture when I look at the Bitcoin futures. Okay, almost identical picture, which is really what you would expect. This is exactly what's going on with the, this is the Bitcoin continuous futures contracts. Okay, so that gives you a continuous picture. It doesn't have the expirations of the various contracts. So it's the same kind of picture. And it looks to me like we are in intermediate wave three of primary wave three to the upside. Okay, so that is the picture on Bitcoin. It looks pretty bullish at the moment. All right, I uh, hope you found that helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up for the video. And if you're not a, a uh, YouTube subscriber, uh, hit that little subscribe button. And again, if you'd like to have more of this kind of information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net right here and check out the membership. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. Be safe, and we'll talk to you on the next video.